All right, let's move on to the next most common metal crystal structure, and that's body-centered cubic, BCC. All right, I'll bet you can guess this one. You saw how face-centered cubic looked, so let's try drawing the body-centered cubic, All right? Let's start by drawing our cube again. All right, we've got it. Now let's place our atoms. Remember, with cubic structures, we always start at the corners. So let's place atoms at the corners. All right, we've got atoms at corners. Now, because this is body-centered, we're not going to place the other atoms at the face centers. We're going to place it at the body of the entire unit cell. So right smack dab in the middle is where we place the other atom. Now again, just like before, I have not drawn these to scale. I've drawn them smaller so they're a little bit easier to see. If they were to be to scale, they would swell until they touch their neighbors. So where would they touch their neighbors in this model? Think about it for a second. Well, they're all going to swell, and this guy's just going to get bigger and bigger until it touches these corner ones, which are also getting bigger, right? So they're going to touch where? They're going to touch along the body diagonal, so along this line right here. Along that line right there, you're going to get them touching halfway along that line, okay? So you can see that in this structure here. Again, here they are not in the space filling model, but when you put the space filling model you see that they do in fact touch along the diagonal of that cube not along the face right the face is right here they don't touch along the face they touch along the body diagonal so just like before we can relate the lattice parameter a right this distance here the cube edge length we can relate that to the size of the atom it's a little trickier right it's one extra step that we have to do let's go ahead and do it what would it be well that green line, underneath that green line, along the face diagonal, it would be right there. And then you'd have this line right there. You see that triangle? Let me draw that triangle out over here. You've got this line. You've got the light blue line down here. And you've got the green line. Okay? And the green line is the one where all the action's happening. That's where we have um, the radii. It would be radius 1 radius 2, radius 3, and radius 4 would be equal to the length of that body diagonal. But how long is that body diagonal? Well, if this one over here is A, and we already decided that this one is root 2 times A, what would the length of the green line be? The green line would be equal to root 3 times A. So that root 3 times A is going to be equal to 4 of our radii. So that's body-centered cubic. That's how you relate the lattice parameter to the ionic radii size or the, met the metal radius size here since we're talking about metals, okay? So that's, that's the relationship. Now what about this? What would be the coordination number for body-centered cubic? Remember, coordination number is how many atoms are its nearest neighbors that it's surrounded by. Well, let's take a look at the structure. Pretty obvious, right? Take this guy in the middle. How many things surround it? Clearly, it's touching eight it has a coordination number of 8. That's not as much as this one, FCC, which had a coordination number of 12. And this one, body center cubic, is not as densely packed, right? We know that. We we're going to calculate it in a moment. But one would expect it to not be as densely packed because its coordination number is lower, right? So let's calculate its packing factor. factor. Let's calculate its packing factor. Its coordination number is equal to 8. It's packing factor. Well, before we do its packing factor, we have to count how many atoms are there per unit cell. Well, we've got eight atoms on the corners, and we know that those are one-eighth of the way inside. So one-eighth times eighth, and then you've got one that's completely inside in the very center. So there are one-eighth times eight plus one. That's how many atoms there are per unit cell. What's the size of each atom? Well, it's four thirds times pi times r cubed. We're going to divide that whole thing by the lattice parameter, a cubed. And now, just like before, we have to solve for r in terms of a or a in terms of r. Either one's acceptable. Let's do a in terms of r this time. What was our expression? We said that root 3a equals 4r. So we're going to plug in. We're going to say that a, a must be equal to 4r over root 3. Okay? So let's plug that in down here. For here, we're going to say that that's equal to 4r 
divided by root 3. That, that has to be cubed. Okay? When you plug this in, you find out that the atomic packing factor for body-centered cubic, it is only 68%. It's equal to 0 0.68, or 68%. In other words, it doesn't pack as closely, but we knew that because from the steel phase diagram, we knew that the room temperature alloy was BCC, and that when we heat it up, it turned into FCC, and it shrunk. Well, that's because you went from 68% packing to 74% packing. It had to squeeze those atoms closer together, and so the wire shrunk. Since you weren't creating new atoms, it just squoze together a little bit better. So that's the difference between BCC and FCC lattices.